Hey, this is Kim McDaniel with the Salt Lake Tribune, and this week our three questions are with KUTV anchor Mary Nichols. Thanks for having us. Oh, good morning. <laughs> we are here talking to Mary because, as you probably have read, Mary was recently diagnosed with breast cancer, and she's going through her treatment very publicly. She's doing a blog and she's doing segments on the air. So we're here to ask her a little bit about that. So how are you feeling before we start? Okay, I'm on day 10 now of after the first chemo treatment and amazingly feeling pretty well. I mean, I expect it to get worse. Right. And I feel I'm overanalyzing everything, right. kind of feeling <laughs> like, okay, is it my taste buds and neuropathy a little bit in my fingers and maybe toes? And I had a head cold and had to call the cancer center and say, okay, what do I do? Is right. it, do I treat it like a normal person or do I need to do something differently? Right. And uh, it's just been weird. Okay. It's just been weird. All right, so we're gonna start. My first question is what has been the most surprising thing about all of this? I think the most surprising is how open people are to talk about it. I have survivors coming up to me in the store saying thank you for sharing. And, but I also have people who um, have had friends with cancer or family members with cancer or going through chemo and they didn't know what was going on in their life. And since I'm sharing little bits of it as I go through it, they're like, I never knew that. This is like an education for a lot of people to say, oh, I didn't realize that's why. Or I didn't realize you have to do that too. Or it just they're, they're just coming out of the woodwork to ask questions and say that they're learning. But also, the other surprise is how many people are, it's helping them. The cancer survivors say, I like that you're sharing. It's, it, and it, they're talking to me and sharing their stories and I think it helps them to have someone to talk to. And then I benefit because I'm getting the advice right. from all these survivors who are saying, okay, this is what you should probably expect or take this with you. <laughs> and, and it's really been helpful. So many people are offering support and advice that I'm, I'm really using. Good. Very good. Okay, so the second question is, what's been the most difficult thing? I think the most difficult is um, having people look at me, being, being the story instead of getting to tell the stories. Right. We get into this business to tell stories and to learn about other people. So when I became the main part of the story, it's uncomfortable. I think that's the most difficult. It's, it's really uncomfortable to talk about me because I want to talk about other people. Right. And, and then to have, I mean, my kids have always called me the freak show anchor lady. <laughs> and so if we go shopping or something and people come up to me, it's like, is that a friend? Do you know that person? Or is it because you're the freak show anchor lady? <laughs> and now I'm a freak show anchor lady with another freak attached to it. You know, that it's going to be chemo, that, it's gonna, that I have cancer, and, and that's even more freaky of a freak. You know, <laughs> and, and not that in, in a bad way, but just right. that attention's drawn on me. And it's, that's a little weird. That's, that's probably the most difficult is that I, people are looking at me not because of the job I do, but because I have something. Right. And I think people can relate to that too, that they, they, you don't choose to have it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so what, obviously this is all very public, you're doing this on the air, you just talked about, you know, getting recognized for it and that sort of thing. Is there anything about doing this publicly that you regret? The only hesitation I had was my kids. I wanted to make sure they were comfortable with me going public with it. And, but once they were, they were like, well, what, what else would you do? Everything you do is on TV and you share your stories and stuff. So why would you do anything different? How would you hide it? So, but I think once we went public with it, it's, I, don't, I don't regret going public with it because I think it's a more powerful story. I mean, to start out with doing a mammogram for a story. Right to say, hey, look how easy this is. And then to have that mammogram is the one that found the tumor. And then as soon as I got the results that it was cancer, I thought, we have to do this. This is an even more powerful story. Everybody sees, ah, oh, Mary got a mammogram, blah, 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 go get your mammograms. It's not that powerful. But hey, that mammogram saved my life. That's much more powerful. And kind of want the holy crap factor. Right. I mean, I want people to say, wow, if it can happen to Mary, you know, I've been doing health reporting and all this stuff for years, oh, yeah. and ha if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. And I hope people realize that and get not just breast cancer screenings, colon cancer, go for your colonoscopies, get your heart checked, do all the things you're supposed to do because there are so many that are preventable. Right. And that's what I'm hoping to use, turn it into something good. Right. And plus it makes me feel like I'm doing something instead of just sitting around waiting for doctors to fix me. Right. <laughs> I feel like if I'm talking about it and educating people and maybe getting more people to be screened, then maybe I'm doing something too. Right. You know, I feel like I might be accomplishing something. So. I'm going to cheat this time. I have a fourth question because we have one from our Twitter followers oh, that they're good. dying to know. When and if it comes time to shave your head, are you going to do it on the air? 
Oh, I don't know. I was planning on letting my kids do it. Oh. <laughs> and letting them shave my head. But also, I mean, I have a couple of different wigs that I think I'm just going to have fun with it. I'll go blonde one week. I'll go red one week. I'll see what I can do. My sister gave me a wig, uh, real hair that's super expensive, and she said that I could cut it because hopefully she'll never get it back again. Mm -hmm. But um, And I'm going to look at a few different ones, just different options for on the air. But I don't know. My, I was planning on kids shaving it. Maybe I'll have... Have the kids shave it on the air. Have the kids shave it or have Casey shave it on the air. <laughs> Even better. Have a fun with it. But no, then that's what you have to do. Right. Yeah. Right. I know it's pretty traumatic for a lot of people. I mean, I've heard from a lot of people saying, I didn't think it would be that big of a deal, but it is. And I'm ready for that too, I think. <laughs> we hope so. We're, everybody's pulling for you. I know we are. Uh, thanks a lot for it's being fun. with us. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being with us, Mary. And this has been three questions.